church family welcome to our worship service we are so excited that you have joined us for worship in just a little bit we are going to be celebrating the goodness of god and i want you to be expectant if you have joined us for the very first time write to us connect at watertechurch.com now let's all rise and worship jesus together the bible says that god exalted the name of jesus high above every other name come on join us and let's lift the name of jesus are you ready to sing and dance with us
You are high and risen up, Lord. We have victory in you. The battle belongs to Jesus. Come on. Let's sing it together. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. and sing. So when I'll fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And we sing it out together. of our revival. Would you revive us, Lord? Would you revive us, Jesus? That's the cry of our hearts today. Yes, Lord. Would you revive us, Lord? Would you revive us, Lord? We sing. Seen what you can do, oh God of wonders, the power has no end. The things you've done before in great measure, you will do again. 
Cause there's no prison wall you can break through No mountain you can move All things are possible There's no broken body you can raise No soul that you can save No things are possible The darkest night you can light up You can light up God of revival Let hope arise Death is overcome
Lord, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Lord, we are so honored to serve a God like you. You sent your only son to die on that old rugged cross at Calvary to pay the penalty for our sin. Jesus, just before you left this planet Earth, you promised us, you gave us a promise of Holy Spirit coming to indwell us so that we may do work of ministry. Lord, we are here as your church gathered, scattered all across this planet Earth. Lord, I pray that you may work in us do a supernatural work in us so that we may arise to the occasion that you have set before us declaring the goodness and the mercies of god to people who have not heard anything regarding the good news of the gospel father we thank you lord as we dig in and step into what you have prepared for us lord i pray that you'll speak to each and every one of us revive this city revive this nation revive this church in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Friends, revival is an important aspect of this walk of faith that we have that Jesus so graciously gave to us. And I want to read for us two scriptures from Psalm 85. Verse 6 says, Won't you revive us again so your people can rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Friends, be expectant. The Lord is so good. When you have received that power, you won't look back. And Jesus is able to do more than we could ever imagine. Are you ready for the Word of God? If you are ready, I want to ask you to pick your pen, paper, notebook, whatever it is, and get ready for the Word of God as Pastor Eddie comes to share from the Word of God. Thank you, Pastor Joel. You are a good man. I love you and I love your family. Well, family, welcome to the moment as we get to dive into God's Word. I do hope you are participating in the 30 days through the Book of James challenge. Now, if you haven't yet started, it's never too late. All you have to do is read through the Book of James in one sitting for the next 30 days, I can guarantee you, your life will be changed by the power of God's Word. And today, I'm wrapping up the series, Faith on Display. Wow, what an amazing journey. Now, if you miss any of the messages, you can find them on our website and you will be blessed as well. Shall we pray just before I dive into God's Word? Now, Father, I thank you so much for this moment. I thank you so much for your Word. Your Word is alive. Your Word is active. The Word is able to change people's lives, especially those who do the Word. And that's my prayer for every person that is a part of this service. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name I do pray. And every person said a big amen. Over the last couple of weeks, we have journeyed through the book of James. And James was the half-brother of Jesus, who was writing to believers who were scattered across the Roman Empire. They were going through uh, different kinds of trials. And so James writes to them to encourage them to practically live out their faith. In other words, to put their faith on display. He tells them to display their faith by persevering through trials, by resisting temptations, by becoming doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. He tells them to display their faith by living holy lives, by being impartial as they practice love towards people, by caring for the vulnerable. And then last week we saw that we display our faith when we pray in faith to God when we are sick or are facing any difficult situation. And I believe that these are practical issues of faith today. And we today need to be people who are displaying our faith 
practically so the world can look at us and get to know that we serve a living God. Now today, I'm going to talk about another aspect of displaying our faith, and that is taming the tongue. You see, we display that our faith is genuine. We display that our faith is living when we speak life-giving words. And chapter 3 is dedicated to uh, taming the tongue. And so would you open your Bibles and let's read together. James chapter 3, and I'm going to read the first 12 verses from the NIV. Verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take sheep as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by, man by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise Lord and Father, and with it we cast human beings who are made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Wow, what an amazing scripture. You see, researchers have said that Human beings on average speak about 18,000 to 25,000 words. And men on average speak about 25,000 words. Women speak about 30,000 words. And they say that when a man comes back home, he has already exhausted the 25,000 words and his wife has not even used one word. Imagine what happens after that. It is also said that we spend a fifth of our lives speaking. Wow! What an amazing statistic here. You see, when we uh, were raising our little children, sometimes they would get sick and we'd take them to the hospital to see a pediatrician. And one of the checks that these peds did was to open their mouths and look at their tongue. And by looking at the tongue, the doctors were able to tell the status of the body. In chapter 3, James tells Christians to display living faith, true faith, genuine faith through their speech, through the words that they speak. In fact, this matter is so important to James that he talks about it in each of the five chapters in this short epistle of James. You know why? Because our words reveal the status of our heart. You see, like a nurse puts a thermometer under a tongue, to check the body temperature. In the same way, you see, our words are, you know, like a spiritual thermometer of our lives. Jesus too addressed the issue of the tongue when he said that out of the abundance of our hearts, the mouth speaks. So James is saying that our faith is on display through the words that we speak. So why should we tame our tongue? The first reason that James gives to us is this. We should tame the tongue because the tongue has power to condemn us. And James includes himself in this point that I'm going to be teaching on right now. Chapter 3, verse 1. He says, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we, we, including himself, including me right now, we who teach will be judged more strictly. You see, James is warning believers that they should not rush into the ministry of becoming teachers because we have the greatest potential to sin 
with our tongue. And when we sin with our tongue, his word is telling us that God is going to judge us harshly. Wow. I wish somebody took me aside when I was a, a young person and taught me this principle that every word that I speak is going to be judged by God. You see, there are many wannabe teachers, preachers today masquerading all over as teachers, and their motives are wrong. They've been motivated into coming into the teaching ministry because of their prestige, the honor, and you know what, friends? If you are one of them, God's word is saying you are going to be judged more strictly. You see, friends, Jesus also addressed this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 to 37. He says, but I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you'll be acquitted and by your words you will be condemned. Now note this, James is not saying that people should not teach. He's simply saying that when you want to become a teacher of God's word, take it seriously. It's not a popularity context. It's not about how much money you can make because of building a church. It is about the lives of the people who are going to listen to you because every day you are going to influence them to make decisions that affect their lives and eternity. You see, friends, when I sin with my tongue on this pulpit, I'm influencing hundreds of thousands of people. Therefore, I must be careful. The Apostle Paul also advises young Timothy when he was pastoring um, one of the churches in Asia Minor in 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2, verse 15. He says this, Do your best to present yourself to God, not to man, to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Paul was telling Timothy, you need to be approved by God. And the ministry of teaching is from God and it must be done because you fear God, you want to honor God, it's not for man. So Paul is saying that we must diligently handle the word of truth because when we sin with our tongue as teachers of the word, we have potential to lead many people astray. So we must tame our tongue, especially we the teachers and the preachers of God's word because God is going to judge us harshly if we use our words carelessly. The second reason that uh, James gives to us here is that we need to tame our tongue because the tongue has power to condemn other people. The tongue has power to kill people. Verse five, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. In here he's saying that an untamed tongue has the power to condemn others. Untamed tongues have broken relationships, broken friendships, broken marriages, broken families, broken nations. Untamed tongues have taken nations to war. That is the power of the words that we speak. They can condemn others, they can kill people. But on the other hand, a tamed tongue has the power to heal. It has the power to encourage. It has the power to build up others. It has the power to bring forgiveness, peace, and love in any relationship. So James is saying we need to tame our tongue because our tame tongue displays that we are having living faith, but also it's going to build other people up. Someone said that no wonder God put your tongue in a cage behind your teeth, walled by your mouth. <laughs> Don't you love that? You see, I remember when I was going to school many, many years ago, the names of the teachers who spoke life into me. When I was going through some difficulties, they believed in me and spoke life-giving words. I also remember some of them who spoke negatively, words that influenced me, but I'm so glad that I have a mind of Christ right now. God's word has changed my life. So, teachers, your words matter. Your words matter. In fact, you spend more time with our children than the parents do. So teachers, wherever you are, school teachers, speak life. Speak encouragement. Lift up those children that have been entrusted to you by God to train them up to become godly men and godly women. Speak life. Now I want to speak to you as parents. You are the life teacher of your children. You see, 
Your words matter. And so being a pastor here at Watoto, we talk to many young people who come and they are hurting because of the words they have received from their parents, negative words. So parents, speak life. Encourage the youngsters. Yes, I have children, they mess up, but every time I'm about to say something wrong, I remember my words carry a lot of power. I need to use my words wisely. You see, friends, when we tame our tongue, we display that we have living faith. And a tame tongue is also a sign of spiritual maturity. So, friends, be kind. Speak words that are affirming, you know. Be an encourager. Speak the truth in love. <laughs> that is so important. Now, for all of you who like tweeting, don't tweet negativity. Tweet hope. Let me tell you, the world is looking for hope and everywhere they go, they're finding negative news. Come on, use your social media platforms to speak life. Be a merchant of hope by speaking life-giving words. Now, reason number three, why we must tame our tongue is this. The tongue has the power to control our lives. The tongue has the power to control our lives. In verse 2, James says, We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take a ship as an example. Although they are so large, they are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants the ship to go. So in these verses, you see, James is saying that if you want to control your life, if you want to determine the destiny of your life, tame your tongue. Because an untamed tongue has the power to control you and lead you into trouble. So James is saying, focus on the tongue if you want to live a perfect life. Now, we know that there's only one who ever lived that is perfect, that is Jesus. But all of us must work towards that goal of perfection. Yes, we'll never be perfect, but we must make sure that our tongues are tamed in order to control our very lives. Now, James, in these verses, he uses two beautiful illustrations that I love. He uses an illustration of a horse, and he's saying that by placing a piece of metal, it's called a bit, in the mouth of a horse, that horse is tamed. It is able, you are able to turn that horse wherever you go. You know, many years ago, I also sat on a horse and I turned this rope, I don't know if they're called ropes, but the horse obeyed me. Now, let me tell you this. Without a bit, without that piece of metal in the mouth of a horse, that horse is wild, it is dangerous, it is good for nothing. In the same way, he talks about a ship, these massive, 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 Vessels that carry thousands of people, they are steered by a small instrument called a rudder. By applying just a little effort on the rudder, you control this massive vessel, a ship. Now, many years ago, I had uh, uh, the opportunity of traveling on the Watero Children's Square to Canada, and we were, um, were crossing from one island to the next on a big ferry with hundreds of thousands of people. Not Okay, not hundreds of thousands of people, hundreds of people and cargo. And now the captain invited us as a choir to go to the bridge. And then he gave us an opportunity, one by one, to steer the ship. Man, I remember being at that wheel, turning that ship wherever I wanted it to go. It was so massive, but I did it effortlessly. You know why it was effortless? Because power was being applied to a precise tool called the rudder. And by controlling the rudder, I was able to control the ship. James is saying, in the same way, if you are going to control your life, focus on the tongue. Tame your tongue and you have your life in order. Leave your tongue untamed and your life is a disaster, not for you, but also for the people around you. You see, when we tame our tongue, we display living faith or true faith. Now, in the next couple of verses, James turns his attention on how we can tame the tongue. Verse 7, he says, All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by, by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Now, here James begins by giving us bad news. 
He's saying, yes, I know you want to control and tame that tongue, but it's impossible to do it in your own strength. Now, James isn't saying that the tongue cannot be tamed. He's simply saying that you cannot do it in your own strength. You need somebody who's stronger than you to empower you to tame the tongue. And then he goes on, verse 9. With the tongue we praise the Lord and the Father. With it we cast human beings who are made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Now James is using an illustration of a spring and a tree to help us diagnose the root problem of our tongues. You see, in saying, when you look at the fruit, you can tell the quality of the source. If you drink fresh water, you know it was from a fresh water source. When you eat a delicious orange, you know it came from an orange tree, not a mango tree. And he's saying that when we taste the fruit of our lips, yes, our words, when we look at the quality of our words, we can tell the quality of our source and the source being our hearts. So to control or tame our tongue, we must focus on our hearts. In Luke 6, 44 to 45, Jesus says, For every tree is known by its fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from bramble, from a bramble bush. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the treasure, evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of his mouth, of his heart, sorry, the mouth, Speaks. You see, the tongue is simply a tool of the heart. The tongue simply says what the heart is full of. So if you want to tame your tongue, if you want to speak life-giving words, focus on what you place in your heart. Because tongue problems are actually heart problems. So how do we tame our tongues? Thank you for asking. Number one, submit your heart to God. Give the controls of your heart to your maker, your creator, who has a good plan for your life. In James chapter 4, verse 7 to 10, he says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you devil-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and you, your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. The first step that we take to tame our tongues is by submitting ourselves to God. Give the controls, yes, of your heart to your maker God because he understands you and he can empower you to tame your tongue and then your living faith will be on display. The second thing that we must do to tame our tongue is this. Guard your heart. Simply, simply say it. Protect your heart. Proverbs 4, 23, 24 says this. Guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your heart, of your life, sorry. So we protect our hearts two ways. We must have a door that keeps some things out and then that allows some things in. We reject ungodly advice and we allow godly advice through his word into our hearts. So we must open our hearts to God's word but also close our hearts to ungodly advice. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 2 says this, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day 
and night. You see, friends, ungodly advice is all around us through TV, social media, the unreality shows that you watch. They are formatting your software, your heart, to thinking in an ungodly way, and that is going to determine what you say through your mouth. So guard your heart. Stop ungodly stuff from entering, but also meditate on God's word because God's word is God's will for your life. You know, reject everything that does not line up with God's word. And when you do that, your heart is going to be filled with good and your mouth is going to speak life. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Hiding the word in the heart enables us to have good in our hearts so we can speak good words. And when we are people who speak life-giving words, we display that we have genuine, we have true, we have living faith in our lives. And this is why we are doing the challenge the 30 days through the book of James. Read the word of God until the word begins to read you. Or get into the word until the word gets into you. It will change your life and it will change your tongue. So what have I said? We tame our tongue because it has the power to condemn us and condemn others. It has the power to control your life and your destiny. But also we tame our tongue because it displays that we have living faith, which is a sign of spiritual maturity. And we can only tame our tongue when we submit our hearts to God, who is the one who created you and I. And so lastly, I want to invite you to surrender your life and your heart to Jesus Christ. If you know that you have not made that decision, you have not received God's forgiveness and you know it in your heart. I don't have to convince you, you know it. Today, I want to pray for you. Now, this prayer does not save you, but it verbalizes what is happening in your heart. If you want to pray this prayer with me so you can surrender your heart to God to receive forgiveness, become a child of God, and then God is going to empower you to tame your tongue, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, today, I receive your forgiveness into my life. I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God who died for my sins and who loves me. And on this day, I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer from your heart, you have become a child of God. Welcome to God's family and congratulations to you. Now, do let us know who you are because we want to get in touch with you and send you some material to help you on this beautiful journey. Write to us, connect at watorochurch.com. God bless you. And right now, let me hand this service over to Brian Abajo. Thank you so much, Pastor Eddie, for sharing God's word with such clarity and authority. Thank you for teaching us on how we can tame the tongue from the book of James. Church, it's been an amazing series, faith on display. Now let's not just be hearers of the word, let's be doers of the word. And now it's time for us to give. Yes, time for us to give. You know what, Toto Church, as your pastors, we are so proud of you because of your continued generosity towards the preaching of the gospel. We feel just as Paul did when he wrote to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 1. And he says to them, I thank God every time I remember you and I pray for you. Why? It was because they were partners together with him in the preaching of the gospel through their generosity. Watoto Church, we're so proud of you. Thank you for loving God's work. Thank you for loving the preaching of the gospel. Now, as you get your tithes and offerings ready, here is a video that we want you to watch. It's going to share with you information on how we can all participate in our generosity moment. God bless you. You can give using mobile money, direct bank transfer, or any banking agent within your community. But also, if you live close to any of our celebration points, you can simply walk over and slip your cash offering into one of the gift boxes. Now, for those using mobile money, let me walk you through the steps you would take. For MTN, dial star 165 star 3 hash and the merchant code 
is 148775. That is 148775. And for Airtel, you dial star 185 star 4 star 9 hash. And the business number is 700,000. That is 7 followed by 5 zeros. For more giving options, check out our website, watotochurch.com forward slash give. But you can also use your phone to scan the QR code which will take you straight to the different giving options. And for your Watoto Child sponsorship, dial star 165 star 4 star 4 hash. Then enter the merchant code WCCM in capital letters. The merchant code is WCCM in capital letters. Now as a reference, type the sponsor's full name only. Fill in the amount to be paid, and finally, fill in your MTN Mobile Money PIN. Thank you for your generosity. Put your hands together like this. We're going to celebrate our victory. Our God is stronger than 10,000 armies. Come on. Hey. Here we go. To battle, no doubt in my mind that my God is with me and the victory is mine. I'll guess in the shadow of my enemies, cause God is my champion and He fights for me. Oh, God is my champion and He fights for me. We say, bigger the battle, wait on my play. There is no giant you cannot stay, cause you're so good. Every time. 
incredible. What a beautiful song. Listen, no matter how big the giant, no matter how big the mountain, our God is stronger and bigger than 10,000 armies. Put your faith in Him today and He'll come through for you. Wow, what an amazing service. I felt the presence of God in every moment, through the worship, through the Word, in a moment of generosity. Absolutely amazing. Listen, you've got to invite somebody next Sunday so that you don't watch the service alone. Come on, let's invite people that do not know Jesus and I know they'll be incredibly blessed. I want to say thank you for attending the service. Please attend next Sunday. Now, are you in need of prayer and counseling? Do call the number that's appearing on your screen right now or write to us, connect at watodochurch.com. Our pastors and counselors will be at hand to pray with you. Now remember to follow us on all our social media platforms. And for those of you watching on YouTube, remember to like, share and subscribe so that you never miss nothing that's happening here at Watoto Church. Hey, our prayer at Watoto is that God will bless you that God will keep you, that God will cause His face to shine upon you and that He'll grant you a blessed week. We love you and God bless you. Bigger the better.